As a motion designer, one of the hardest things you can do is make a cut feel invisible. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down exactly how I did that for the MyClick.co promo. A transition that takes a 2D logo built in After Effects and flips it into a 3D scene in Cinema 4D and Redshift. By the end, you're gonna see how one planned cut can make your work feel way more cinematic and way more professional. Let's hop into it. Alrighty, so we got our scene pulled up here and I'm just gonna go ahead and play the first six seconds of this animation to show you the match cut, to show you the transition, and then we can hop into the breakdown of how it was done. There, I'm gonna go ahead and mute that audio. And as it plays, you can clearly see we are changing from a 2D scene to a 3D scene. Now, let me walk you through my process for how I would do a transition like this from 2D to 3D. A lot of people on my social medias have been asking me about this, and this is the video for you. So stay tuned to the end if you wanna find out all my sauce and all my secrets. I'm here to offer value. The first thing that I really did when I conceptualized about making this animation was looking at the logo design itself. We really have a sphere with the negative imprint of an arrow or a cursor pushed into it to make a C. C obviously standing for click of my click. Now you can see the full logo here. Since I designed this logo as well, I had an idea to do an animation where an arrow comes in and basically imprints this into an orb, the circle that the logo is formed out of anyway. So if we wanted to make this imprint into negative space, we are gonna have to actually craft the arrow itself in its correct proportions. Now here's the original logo with the original arrow proportions. This arrow is isolated into the right length that we wanted to, and this vector was put into our 2D scene with our orb. This vector would also be used for the 3D version of the logo, and that could be seen right here. So now that we extracted the actual arrow from the logo, when we animate this arrow and click it into the orb, it's gonna match up with the perfect proportions that we need to make the transition. Without the perfect proportions and without the perfect angling of the keyframes, this transition does not work and it will look terrible. It's really a matter of pixels. All right, so this is our orb pre-comp in After Effects. This is the thing that the arrow will be impacting with to create the logo. It obviously pulls from the colors of the actual color treatment of the logo package. But the setup that we have going on here is a little bit of a four color gradient matched with some noise. And then that is layered with an atmosphere, which is the same setup, just with a slight Gaussian blur on it, creating a little bit of our atmosphere around our orb. And here is our arrow pre-comp inside of After Effects. Let me get rid of this grid here. Essentially what's gonna be happening in this pre-comp is the length of the arrow lengthens a little bit due to the placement it felt it was needed for the certain part of the animation to put a little bit of an extension. That was more of a personal touch when it's twirling. I felt that that was needed. But at the impact moment, the actual pre-comp goes to full white here. This is where the magic happens of exactly the impact. It is changing from black to white for a split second. We need to show that off. And that is basically happening here to form the logo. To help out with that, we obviously see the white to black transition in the pre-comp. Now, of course, that is timed up with the perfect timing in the main comp, which would be right here. Now, as this impact happens, you can clearly see there's a change of layers here going from the orb and the arrow going into it to the actual logo itself. And now we have the actual logo itself. Now, obviously, this is a slight recreation of it using the assets that we just animated, but it's at the exact same positioning and exact same angles as the actual logo treatment. The reason why we still have it separated is because we're about to turn this animation. Obviously, we can see the rotation happening here to match cut what we made in 3D. Also may want to mention the secondary action coming out of these impact hits right here. Very, very subtle things that just lift off the animation. We have a start to end trim path animation on these three sparks, creating this impact. It's called secondary action. It is an animation principle. So let's actually jump into how we made this 3D scene right now. So to set up this scene in 3D, it's actually quite simple. 
So the setup that we have in 3D here is essentially a cloner on a linear mode, basically just animating its count and its Z position out towards the camera. The actual ring design itself is actually really simple. It's just a primitive ring, which would be a torus, and it's combined with basically capsules attached to spline wraps, and the spline wrap is attached to a spline that is lined up with this ring. Now the animation that happens here is quite simple, but when matched with two different shaders, one being a little bit darker and one being a little bit lighter and both being emissive, it comes across very Iron Man-esque and it just felt cool to me and this is what was put into the cloner. Now when it's cloned a bunch of times, it actually looks really, really cool and you can obviously see we spice it up by changing the colors later. The actual node tree is very simple, just with some redshift ramps and the obvious gradient that you see here, being light for the capsules rotating around and being dark for the actual torus or the ring that is the base. So when they all get cloned together, it's basically like this real big glowing slinky. The trick to the match cut is making sure the positioning is right in the center and it's obviously a perfect circle. Now in post we can fine tune exactly where this circle is hitting, but we wanna get it pretty close. So that's when you would probably go into the front to back viewport and you could line up an actual image. Yeah, right here, if you go to your project settings and then you go to view settings, you can basically go to this back tab. It'll pull up right here, but then you go to this back tab and essentially you can put in any image in here and it'll line up here and you can get that sizing for where it spawns up perfect. Now, when you render this out, it's gonna give you a perfect point to make that transition in After Effects. So once it's rendered, it should look something like this. So this is the actual original render, but it definitely needs some work to make the transition happen. Sizing up the perfect time and doing a slight opacity fade with small scale adjustments got the job done. It was honestly pretty clean. It felt like the logo spawned spun the dial and started this animation to go through this light tunnel into 3D. Obviously, since it's such a jarring white to black transition, we had a little bit of an opacity fade just to make that transition a little bit more smoother. You can see that happening from these frames right here. Since the fact that we wanted to completely change our scene into a dark environment, this light tunnel definitely helped make that transition by shooting to towards the corners of the frame. And that sort of established we were in a new environment, but it was still light until we swing around and we see that, oh, there's breaks in those lights and it's actually a tunnel with a dark background. Since this breakdown is more about the match cut that you're seeing on screen right now, we won't necessarily be diving too deep, obviously, into this part of the animation where it goes into next, where the arrow in 3D goes and selects all of the rings, changes their colors, and they get animated out all fun. If you want to see the breakdown of this scene in the animation, make sure you drop a comment down below and tell me. It is the best way for me to connect and know what type of videos y'all want. But this is a whole video in itself, and this actual scene took so long to do so I just made this video about this exact match cut. I know a lot of people have been asking about 2D to 3D match cuts, so I hope this helped. I really am looking forward to breaking down how I made this sort of activation scene with the 3D arrow, but I think there's a lot of digestible content that I broke down in here, and I don't wanna make this video too long like my last one, but it is an in-depth breakdown. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching this breakdown. If you got some value from it and you're gonna put some of these tips into your workflow, go ahead, do me a favor, drop a like, a comment, or save it to your playlist, or just share the link somewhere. Of course, subscribe subscribe and I, I say to do all these things because it obviously helps me know that people are getting value from these videos and I just want to offer value to the motion maniac community. You already know what it is. Hopefully this helps you transition a 2D scene into a 3D scene or a 3D into a 2D if you're looking to do that. These types of transitions really stand out to clients. Even if it feels like you're doing too much when you plan out these shots, I promise you it turns out well in the end and it also is just an overall great thing to plan certain shots like this. So if you like the breakdowns of these shots that I plan out, please let me know because I got more videos coming soon, more breakdowns coming soon. Honestly, endless content coming soon. So stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.